Hello everyone, welcome to Drishti IAS. My name is Saloni Nankyolir and today let us talk about the serious challenge that our country is facing at the moment, which is the increased generation of e-waste and our inefficient ways of handling it. So let's first understand what e-waste is and why is India struggling so much to deal with its efficient disposal. So what do we mean by e-waste? So e-waste simply refers to all those electronics appliances or electrical devices which are no longer being used which means that they have reached the end of their usable life cycle and they can no longer be put to use like our old phones, laptops, AC, fridge, washing machine etc which have reached the end of their usable life. All this constitute e-waste and this e-waste this is being generated at multiple levels like the level of households meaning people like you and me we also contribute to the generation of e-waste when we simply throw away our old phones laptops ac tv etc we also constitute to the generation of e-waste at the level of households then these it firms or big companies who have a lot of electrical appliances a lot of laptops computers heavy electrical appliances etc when they simply throw it away that also constitutes to the generation of e-waste and then our exporters and importers also when they export or import electrical appliances which are already nearing the end of their life nearing the end of their usable life or which can no longer be exported or imported because they are damaged they are broken they cannot be recycled so they also constitute to the generation of what to the generation of e-waste so e-waste is being generated at multiple levels and why is the treatment of e-waste so important for us because of the constituents of this e-waste so e-waste has a lot of hazardous substances hazardous metals hazardous substances like lead cadmium mercury brominated flame retardants particulate matter both 2.5 and 10 etc so it has a lot of hazardous substances a lot of toxic substances which if untreated and simply released into the atmosphere is going to cause a lot of contamination in air in water and also have adverse effects on our health because these are all toxic substances so the treatment of e-waste becomes very important for us now at the same time while e-waste they have hazardous substances they also have something else that is valuables valuables like gold copper and even rare earth minerals because all these things are being used in the production of semiconductors and semiconductors are being used in our electrical appliances so it becomes very important to treat our e-waste correctly because a we want to get rid of the toxic substances and b we also want to recover as, our valuables as much as possible so that is why the treatment of e-waste is very important and what is the situation of e-waste generation in india so the situation it is very alarming India generates 2.2 million metric tons of e-waste annually and with this we are the third largest producer of e-waste in the world after China and the US. So we have us with 2.2 million metric ton of e-waste being generated every year and out of this 2.2 million metric ton majority is coming from the urban areas 60 percent is coming from the urban areas and the remaining 40 percent is coming from these rural areas because most of these electrical appliances are being used in the urban area so e-waste generation is also happening in the urban areas and out of these 2.2 million metric ton only 43% is being treated formally 
less than half is being treated formally which means majority of it is either being treated informally or not being treated at all so it is being treated informally unscientifically which is not up to the mark or either it is not being treated at all so this is a matter of grave concern because we are the third largest producer of e-waste in the world and we do not have scientific ways of dealing with the disposal of this e-waste that is why e-waste disposal in india becomes serious and challenging right now for us so what should we be doing for that let's understand what is the ideal disposal situation versus what is the present situation so ideally what should be happening we should be following esm which is environmentally environmentally sustainable management practices environmentally sustainable management practices and this esm it constitutes of reduce reuse repair or refurbish so instead of simply throwing away our items our electronic items we must reuse we must recycle repair and refurbish it so that it can be used again and again and we enter what we enter a circular treatment because we are reducing we are reusing we are recycling repairing refurbishing and then again reusing our product so it's a circular way of treating our waste versus what is happening at the moment it is linear we create use and finally dump so right now we are following a linear way of disposal where we're only creating we're using and once it is done it's no longer being used we're simply dumping it away or scrapping it off versus what should be happening we should be in a circular setup where we are reducing our products first we are reusing them and then finally instead of just scrapping them away we are repairing them refurbishing them and reusing it again so this is what should be happening ideally and who should be taking the responsibility of this it should be the producers producers like the manufacturers the manufacturers of these electrical appliances they should be taking the responsibility of this e-waste management so there should be collection and segregation at source wherever this e-waste is being generated it should be collected and segregated at source versus is it happening at the moment it is not it's not happening to the extent desired there should be extended producer responsibility which means that these producers they should take the responsibility of treating the e-waste how by introducing something which is known as take backs what do we mean by take backs take back is a mechanism by which these producers they give the consumer an opportunity to come back to them with the product when the product is no longer being used they can just come back to the producers and the producer will take it back so understand it with a da uh, daily life example when your phone is no longer being used it's an old phone you don't want to use it anymore do you go back to the phone manufacturing company every time and the manufacturer just takes it back no majority of the times we will not do that because the system is not that formalized at the moment instead what do we do we simply give it to the informal scrap dealers like our kabadi walas so this is an informal setup that we are entering we our e waste is entering because the formal setup is not that well institutionalized in the country that is why i said that only 43% of the waste is being treated formally the rest is either being treated informally or not being treated at all because we also see open burning or simply dumping of e waste open burning and dumping of e waste versus what should be there 
we should have licensed mechanisms licensed dismantling of things all these hazardous substances which are present there should they should be dismantled properly there should be a safe treatment of chemicals present there versus what is happening open burning incineration is happening dumping landfills are being created so these things are not being treated as they should be the producers are not taking enough responsibility as they should have so that is why this becomes challenging for us and this in turn creates hazards hazards in the form of a for our health because now we are exposed to what we are exposed to toxins so we are going to have health challenges like neurological disorders cognitive disorders mental disabilities all these things are going to come we are also going to have occupational disorders like the people who are dealing with these occupations the people who are handling these e waste like these informal kabadi walas that i told you about do they have those proper ppe kits do they have safety equipments with them no but should they have that yes so that is why when they don't have it what is happening they are being exposed to this toxic environment this occupational hazard is coming here and this occupational hazard will be in the form of respiratory disorders neuromuscular disorders a lot of things can happen so health hazards are there occupational hazards are there health hazards these are basically also going to happen to the people who live near to these places near to these dumping yards these landfills they are also going to be uh, drinking and eating that contaminated water contaminated uh, soil is going to generate food for them so they are also going to be at risk and finally our environment is going to be at risk because what is happening air pollution is happening water pollution is happening soil pollution is happening leaching is happening all these things are happening so this is also going to have severe consequences on the environment so health hazards will be there occupational hazards will be there and environmental challenges are also going to be there and we also have something else like because we have valuables there's some other practice that is involved here which is the practice of acid leaching because these informal scrap dealers they want to recover the valuable for that they simply expose it to acids expose the e waste to acid acid leaching happens to recover valuables and then this acid leaching leaching is also going to generate toxic fumes and these toxic fumes are again going to harm these people who are doing it and also the people who are living in the nearby areas so hazards are going to be there and these hazards are not going to affect everybody equally the vulnerable section of the society is going to be affected the most the poor people who do not have access to tertiary health care they are going to be affected the most the people who are living in the vicinity are going to be affected the most children are going to be affected the most pregnant women are going to be affected the most all the vulnerable sections of the society they are going to be affected the most by the hazards by the gaps that we see in what ideally the disposal should look like versus the present disposal scenario that looks like so that is why it is very important for us that we deal with our e waste very very efficiently so what should be our way forward way forward will be for all the stakeholders here why because it is not just one person's responsibility it's a complete ecosystem it's an ecosystem of this e waste generation e waste reuse finally and then uh, the complete disposal of everything so a lot of stakeholders are involved here the first stakeholder is the producer so the producer needs to have this extended producer responsibility take back mechanisms all these things need to happen and they also have something which is known as the floor pricing so many a times because these producers they themselves are not a part of this formalized setup like these people they cannot provide this take back mechanism at the doorstep so many a times they just simply buy these certificates these recycling certificates from these formal recyclers so there are some recyclers who just buy the scrap material that e waste from these informal scrap dealers from the kabadi walas and then they recycle everything and then the producer like the phone manufacturing company the big company is simply going to buy that certificate 
certificate from these recyclers and then claim that they have recycled this amount of e-waste just the way carbon credit works this is also going to work in a similar format so these people the producers need to take the responsibility of these things and it also needs to take the responsibility of collection and segregation of all these things proper dismantling and also formalization like providing enough funds for this informal people to actually skill up and be institutionalized be involved in the formal setup so all the producers need to do that then the consumers also have certain responsibility consumers like us we also need to have responsibility towards we also need to have we also need to use our electronic appliances more judiciously in a wiser manner so that we don't simply just scrap away our stuff we don't burn our stuff we don't dump our stuff instead we exercise our right to repair so whenever something just gets old because there's a rapid turnover of devices because we are living in the world of digital convenience there's a growing demand in the market and easily availability easy availability of things is also there so we simply just believe in throwing away the old stuff and getting new stuff but in this uh, scenario we are just generating more and more of e-waste so we can use our electronic appliances more judiciously and exercise our right to repair so that we can repair our things we can refurbish our things and we can finally reuse our things so consumers also need to play a role here and the government is also an important stakeholder because who is going to make the policies government is going to make the policies it is going to implement them we already have a policy which is the e-waste management rules 2022 we already have this and this talks about extended producer responsibility this talks about the floor pricing option it talks about all these things but where is it lacking it is lacking in the implementation the implementation is weak and i've already told that whatever happens if the policy is strong it does not matter just making policies does not matter there has to be a strong implementation of the policy so these floor pricings they have to be very fair so floor pricing is basically the price the minimum price that these manufacturers or these producers are going to pay to this recycler when they buy the certificate so it has to be just it has to be fair floor pricing has to be there extended producer responsibility has to be implemented in a stronger way and then there should be a robust inclusion of these informal informal workers these informal scrap dealers so that they can be upskilled they can be reskilled and then they can finally be uh, amalgamated in the formal institutional setup they can have proper certification courses all these things because these people's health is also at risk because they're not using any medical appliances they're not using any safety equipments so their health is also at risk so the government needs to be very proactive in these things and it also needs to be proactive in health surveillance health surveillance in the areas which are already sensitive to all these substances where acid leaching is happening all these landfills these dumping sites the areas near these things they have to be there has to be proper health surveillance there so that the government proactively has these health camps when you know that certain area is leached with cadmium it is leached with lead there should be proactive health surveillance so that the health of these people can be checked frequently and if need be medical assistance can be provided so a lot of stakeholders they need to work together and only then will the e-waste management properly happen in the country so that was all for today's video we understood that the e-waste situation in our country is very alarming and there are certain gaps that we need to fulfill there are certain policy gaps also that we need to fulfill only then we'll be able to effectively manage our e-waste so now let us practice the question for prelims consider the following statements regarding e-waste management in india one the e-waste management rules 2022 place responsibility on producers for collection and recycling of e-waste through extended producer responsibility two open burning of e-waste by informal recyclers is permitted in india three lead mercury and brominated flame retardants are commonly found in e-waste choose the correct statements one only one and two only one and three only one two and three Please provide your answers in the comment section and we will meet in a new video. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.